By the end of this video, you will know how to create a PDF sewing template in Adobe Illustrator CC 2020. So you can use this template for your digital sewing pattern. These include creating the artboards, labeling the pages, importing the pattern into Adobe Illustrator, and finally, saving it as a PDF sewing template. How to create pages for the template? So I'm here in Adobe Illustrator and right here is my recent use. Here is the letter format that I'm going to select. However, if you guys don't have the reason like I have, you can come over here and click on more preset and you will see this new document. You can come to select letter or any other format you like, just like print, for example. You click on print. And to answer to Rock's question, you can also select A4. But for this purpose, I'm going to select letter format. And if you come to the right here under preset detail, I can name the project that I'm going to do. So for this project, I'm going to name a PDF sewing template dash skirt. Okay. And down below here, I'm going to change points to inches. Then the width I'm going to select or you just highlight, click and drag to highlight it and type in 7.5 inches and then press down tab, then tap again. You come down to height, I'm going to type in 10 inches and press down tab key on your keyboard and under orientation, I'm going to select portrait. Then press the tab key on your keyboard again to continue. Below, right beneath the artboards, I'm going to type in 10 artboards. Again, it depends on what template you are going to create for. I'm going to create for the A-line skirt. I only need 10 artboards, okay? Then right below here, by default, mine, you see the under bleed, all zero value because I was working on it earlier and I changed from whatever number and it left with zero. If your bleed not zero, change them all to zero, okay? And under advanced option right here, it's CMYK, that's good and raster effect, high 300 ppi, that's perfect. And scroll down a little more. You will see preview mode default, that's perfect. Next, this is important. I'm going to click more setting, okay? And name, perfect. And the number of artboards, 10. This is, you see grid by row, that's what we want. So if you're not yet select that, be sure to select that. And spacing. I'm going to select and highlight all the number and type in zero. I'm going to have zero spacing for the artboard. Then press down the tab key on your keyboard and come over here. You see the column? I'm going to type in five. I want to have five column. Then check the width again, seven and a half inches, height 10 inches, bleed all zero values. That's good. And next, I'm going to click on create document. And here, there are 10 pages for an A-line skirt. Number two, I'm going to create 
the scaling square. To create the scaling square, I'm, I'm going to come over here and then you see right here, click on layer and I'm going to name it scaling square. Okay. While the layer is selected, I'm going to the rectangular tool, click on it to select, then come over here, click on one on the page to bring the rectangular window and I'm going to type in one ion, then press the tab key and I'm going to type in one ion, this equal to one inch square guy, and then Press return or enter on your keyboard to confirm. And while the square is selected, I'm going to, do you see the stroke here? Selects black if it's not, but if it is, that's perfect. And come to the fill, I'm going to select no fill, okay? Then just click off on the page. And the stroke one point is perfect. I want one point stroke, okay? Now, this one inch by one inch square, I'm going to label it. So, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. To zoom in, command or control and hit the plus sign. After that, I'm going to the typing tool, click on it to select, then come back here and I'm going to click on one and then start typing. I'm going to type one, then, oops, sorry, one and then shift and then quotation mark and then X, one, shift quotation mark and then type an IN. So this shows that we have one inch by one inch square. I'm going to select it and I'm gonna change the font to 14 or a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to align these objects together. To do so, I'm going to press down shift. So first of all, you see this already selected. If somehow it isn't selected, you go to the black arrow here click on it and then click on the text again and press down shift and click on the square bar. This is important. To align these objects together, you must align to the objects, okay? And to do that, after we select both objects together, now you release the shift key and click again to the box, you see this blue? highlight appear, that means you want aligned it to the objects, okay? After that, come up here to align horizontal, click on one to align, then one more time, align vertical. Now, both are aligned together. Next, I'm going to group them together. Again, to group them together, my key selected and Command or Control D. Now both objects are grouped together. I'm going to move over there a little bit. Next, I'm going to create another scaling square. So this scaling square for the customer to measure it after they print it out. So if it's one inch by one inch, then they are in the correct scaling square, okay? And this right here is one inch by one inch. I'm going to create another scaling square and this one is two and a half by two and a half centimeter. Again, while this layer is selected, I'm going to the rectangular tool, click on it to select, click one on the page to bring this rectangular box and Illustrator appear that one inch by one inch, that's by default that we did it earlier. So now I'm going to type in 2.5 cm, that's for centimeter. 
then press down the tab key and I'm going to do the same 2.5 cm then press down return or enter to confirm and while this square box is still selected I'm going to the stroke and change it to black and change the fill to none and stroke is one point is perfect I'm going to the type tool and click on it to select come back here and I'm going to type in 2.5 by 2.5 and cm and now I'm going to press down the escape key to escape and I'm going to align both objects together again press down shift and click the box next release the shift key and click on the box one more time to see this blue highlight and I'm going to the alignment and click on the align horizontal center and then vertical align center now they both aligned and again mac key select both objects command or control g to group them together okay so while i'm here i'm going to write down a note for the customer to state that they must measure that okay so to do so i'm going to the typing tool click on one to select and I'm going to note notes be sure to measure the one inch or the okay one inch or the 2.5 centimeters scaling square before cutting your fabric okay maybe get it down here okay be sure to measure the one inch or the two and a half centimeter scaling square before cutting your fabric okay so this note show a customer that they have to measure those and make sure they match okay next i'm going to zoom in a little bit and then command or control and then press in the key tool and I'm going to pan it up a little bit so now we just create the pages for the PDF sewing templates as well as the scaling square number three we are going to create the circles for these templates this circle allow the customer to tape this pattern together after they print it more easily, okay? So to create the circle, I'm going to create another layer. And to do so, you come down here, you see create new layer, press down option or all, and then click on it so you can name it. I'm going to name that circle and press return or enter to confirm and I'm going to lock the scaling square for now lock that layer so we won't mess it up okay now I'm going to just zoom in a little bit to create the circle I'm going to go to ellipse tool if you come over here right behind the rectangle tool you click on it or you see this gray arrow just click on it and then you will see the lip tool behind it click on the lip tool to select then click on 
the page one to bring this ellipse window and I'm going to type in 0.5 and I N. We want that circle to be half inch, okay? And press down the tab key on your keyboard. Now type in 0.5 I N and then press down return or enter to confirm. And I'm going to change the color to like a 50% or 60% gray. So when you print it, it doesn't like use up all the ink, okay? Then, no stroke, that's perfect. And I'm going to go to the opacity. Again, while the circle is selected, go to opacity and then uh, just drag it around 70%, 72. It doesn't have to be like perfect. Then you come over here, click on that circle and you drag it. And then see right here, you see this, uh, that highlight appear right there. We want it to be like right on the center, okay? You see right there, when it's right on the center, the line appear, just like that. And if you wanna be sure, zoom in a little more, okay? After creating the perfect circle, now I'm going to make the copies of that circle and then place it on the corner on the artboard like I'm doing right now, okay? So to make a copy, I'm going to this black arrow, click on it to select and come back here. You just point the, point the mouse over and then press down Option or Alt and then drag, okay? And I'm going to place right there on top of the corner. Next, while that circle is still selected, I'm going to press down Command or Control and then press the letter D, okay? Continue, press the letter D until you create all the circle from beginning corner until the inner corner, okay? Next, I'm going to select all that circle. To do so, I'm going to Command or Control, and then press A. Then I'm going to group them all together by Command or Control G. Next, I'm going to press down Option or Alt, then click and drag to make a copy. And as you can see, you see this guideline appear. That means we're on the other center and I'm going to command or control and press down letter D to create more copies. Okay. So as you can see, now we have all the circle on every corner of this artboard and that's what we want. Next, I'm going to group them all together again. Since all other layer are locked, I can just command or control A to select and then command or control G to group them all, okay? Then next, I'm going to lock that layer as well. Now I'm going to create the border for the artboard. To create the border, I'm going to create another layer. Come down here again. You see the create new layer. Press down option or all and then click. And this bring this layer option window. And I'm going to type in border. And press return and enter to confirm. After that, I'm going to, you see, Right now, by default, it's under the lip. So click on it to expand. And now, select the rectangular tool. Click on one to select. And now you're going to click one on the page to bring this, like, excuse me, to bring this rectangular window and type in 7.5 IN. We want seven and a half. Press down the tab key and press down 10 IN. So we want it seven and a half by 10 inches. Then press down return 
or enter to confirm. And I'm going to change the stroke to black and the fill to none. After that, I'm going to change the stroke size to two point, okay? And I'm going to move this and place it on top the first artboard. To do that, I'm going to this black arrow, click on it to select and come back here. Just hover those mouse over and then you click on it and then drag. And I want that right on. You see this when this guideline appear, that means you are right on the center. So release the mouth to place the border, okay? After that, while this border is selected, I'm going to make a copy. So to make a copy, I'm going to hold down Option or All, click on it to drag. Okay, and see right here now. Again, this is a favorite shortcut key, Command or Control letter D. Click on it until you get all the border on top of every artboard, okay? After that, again, you see this layer, we already lock them. I'm going to just command or control A to select all, and I'm going to command or control G to group them. Then after that, I'm going to make another copy. To do so, just again, while all the artboard is selected, I'm going to press down Option or Alt, click on it to drag. See right here, now you see all these, you see this uh, guideline appear, now you release it, and now you just place these borders around all the artboards. Next, I'm going to Command or Control A to select them all and I want to group them together, okay? Command or Control G to group them. Now we just finished creating a border all around the artboards. I'm going to number these pages, okay? To do so, again, create another layer. Come down here, press down Option or All and then click to create layer and I'm going to name it numbers. Press enter or return to confirm. While the number layers is selected, I'm going to the type tool, click on it to select, then click anywhere on the page. I will start over here, which then I'm going to put number one first and I'm going to change the font size to 120. Press return or enter to confirm and type in number one, okay? You can press escape or go to this black arrow, click on it to, you see after you click on it, now you get out of the typing tool, okay? And I'm going to align the text to the artboard, but I'm going to align only this vertical, uh, this horizontal, excuse me, but not the vertical, okay? Because I want it kind of one third of the page right there. You can place anywhere you would like, but this is the perfect spot for me. Again, guys, I'm going to make copies of this number, okay? To do so, well, the text is selected, press down Option or All, then click and drag. And you follow this guideline. You see the guideline appear right there. Next, I'm going to press down Command or Control and letter D to make as many copies as I like. And I'm going to change the number from one to five. To do that, you go back to the typing tool, then 
click on it to select and come over here you just you know hover the mouse over the number and you see this line appear the blue line then you just click and drag now you can change the number to two and while the typing tool is selected you still just click and drag and then change it to three to four then to five after that press down escape or the black arrow tool to get out of the typing tool okay after that again you see all these layer are locks i'm going to press command or control a to select all these number and i'm going to press down optional all and then click and drag to make more copies And we want to align to this number, okay? I think that's about right. Next, I'm going to change this number from 5 to 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. To do that, I'm going to this typing tool, click on it, click and drag, and then 6, 7, eight, nine, then 10. Press escape to get out the typing tool. So after that, I'm going to command or control A to select it all and command or control G to group them. After numbering the pages, guys, this is the fun part. It's time to import the pattern into a template okay to do so again i'm going to lock the number layer and then come down here to create new layer press down option at all click it to create a layer i'm going to name that skirt okay and the color is perfect press ok to confirm so to import the pattern into the template, I'm going to file and then select place. So this allow me to navigate to my pattern and I'm going to my file. So how to make a PDF pattern template, I'm going to double click to open my file. I mean, choose me to open my folder and I'm going to select the skirt pattern, a perfect A-line skirt pattern. Click on it and then click place. And this is important, guys. You see right here, this is my pattern, right? Be sure to click one and don't drag. We want it, the pattern stay as exactly as it is because we want it to produce an accurate side pattern so click one to place that's it okay and now i'm going to use command or control keyboard and press down the minus sign to zoom in okay so as you can see i have an a-line skirt pattern that i draft earlier in close 3d and let me show you so let's say somehow you make a mistake and you drag, you, you know, kind of wobble, change the sizes of the pattern. No worries, just delete it and then repeat the step, okay? All right, so now I brought in these, you see, back skirt and front skirt. Since we do a PDF pattern, we want to save as much paper as possible. I'm going to crop the thing that I don't want. And in Adobe Illustrator, the cropping tool is perfect for that because the cropping tool in Adobe Illustrator does not change any sizes when we crop the object. So to do that, I'm going to make copy. First of all, we want one back skirt piece and one front skirt piece. And we want the front waistband and the back waistband. 
we will eliminate the front piece here and the one back piece here okay and to do that I'm going to make let's say we want total four pieces of the skirt okay so I'm going to make four copy to make four copy I'm gonna just press down option or all on the keyboard and then click and drag so now I make just two three and I'm going to make four all right and let me just zoom in a little bit and pan it over okay and another important thing that we should know is that the skirt layer should be below every other layers okay so I'm going to move that down below every other layer now we have four pieces of patterns and I'm going to kind of move it around so go to the black arrow tool click on it then you can move the object around so they don't stack on one another because when we crop we want to crop it that they don't stack on one another okay so again we going to start by cropping for the back skirt first so this is the back skirt this is the front skirt so i'm going to the cropping tool so after you imported the pattern in you make four copies and after that select the piece that you want to crop first which is this piece right here then go to the property panels which is in here and guys important thing to know if the object isn't selected you can't find a crop tool in here okay and the property panel doesn't appear so first of all you come to the black arrow click on it now the cropping tool down here under the property panel and i'm going to select crop image and cropping a linked file embedded a copy of original the original file and links look at it's not affected that's perfect so i'm going to select don't show again and click ok and now i'm going to just you see how with the mouse over you see this pointing head like both sides you can do it from the side here or you can do it from here okay and again we want it as close as possible but not cut any of the skirt because we want it to be accurate okay press down command or control and then press the plus sign to zoom in a little bit all right don't be shy to zoom in as far as possible so you can see that we don't cut us a skirt all right We want to save the paper but at the same time we don't want a skirt cut out okay so that looks like perfect i'm going to you can press down return or enter or click on apply to crop the skirt pattern now i'm going to press down command or control and with the minus key to zoom out so I'm going to just bring them over here now we have the perfect back skirt okay command or control with the plus key to get it a little bit closer now you can see this is the back skirt and we have the square measuring all those cool stuff I just love it and you see the circle and the square box it's perfect for a customer when they print out the paper they can actually use those circle those square to actually tape them together so it's really cool now I'm going to zoom back out a little bit and I'm going to pan over 
Next, I'm going to cut the front skirt, okay? We will do the same thing. Go to the black arrow tool and then click on it and come to the cropping tool. And let's do command and control minus and right here. See right here when you hover the mouse over on the center, these uh, four headed arrows appear. You can just click and drag the crop area where you like. Now I'm going to hover the mouse over over here. So you just crop it then. Do the same thing here. And again, I'm going to zoom in, command or control with plus sign. Okay. We want it as close as possible, but not too close that we cut the skirt away. Okay, that looks pretty good. Again, return or enter to submit your cropping. And I'm going to command or control and hit the minus key to zoom out. And after that, I'm going to just click here and then drag it over. You're almost done, guys. So next, I'm going to crop two more pieces. First one is the front waistband. Again, go to black arrow tool, click on it, and then come back here to select. Next, I'm going to the cropping tool over here under the property panel. Click on it. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit, uh, zoom out a little bit. Command or control minus to zoom out. Command or control plus sign to zoom in. Okay, then press enter or return key to submit. After that, I'm going to press down command or control with the minus sign. Then I'm going to move the wristband over. Okay. All right. So after that, I'm going to do the final piece. Again, click on it and come here to the cropping tool. And I'm going to crop the back waistband. And see right here, when it's too small, we can't even crop, we just have to zoom out a little bit. So command or control with the plus sign to zoom out. Now we can adjust a cropping area. This is super awesome tool guys. Press on return and enter to confirm, then command or control with the minus sign. Then I'm going to bring it over here. Okay, so now let's just zoom in a little bit. Command or control plus sign. This is really awesome, guys. So now we just arrange the pattern to the way that we want it. Next, I'm going to save this as a PDF template. To do so, I'm going to see right here, I'm going to 
file I'm going to save as the name is perfect that's all good and right here this is important I'm going to you see under format change that to Adobe PDF okay then so by default I already say it to how to make pattern template if you want to navigate it to somewhere else you can just select here and then select any folder you want to save to but right here I'm good just click on it to select and come down here you click on save to continue and this is important okay so in general and come down here under option we want preserve illustrator editing capability and check because we don't want a customer to edit a pattern we have to leave that unchecked okay next embed page thumbnail i like that check and optimize for fast web view i like that check as well and view pdf after saving i also like to check because i like to see my pattern after i save and create artboard layer from top to low to level layer okay and then come down here click on save pdf and here this warning window pop up saving this document with preserve illustrator editing capability unchecked may disable some editing feature when the document is read back in do you want to continue yes we do because again that is perfect i'm going to click don't show it again and then click ok and it is saving so here it is guys you have it see right here we have all the labels we have this is going to be really really awesome guys important notes though you must print this pattern in the pdf format to get an accurate size okay you can't use any other format except a pdf format okay and there you have it